for this session, we talk about your income taxes. For income taxes, we are not talking about taxation. This is not taxation, but we are accounting for the difference between the accounting income and your income per tax return. So the income taxes here provided under IAS 12 or past 12 here in the Philippines does not talk about your accounting for taxation. For your taxation, that is a different subject. This is, be, this is not based on standard. This is based on our law. This is based on your train law or your NIRC as amended by your train law. But what we talk about your income taxes here is generally the accounting for the differences between your accounting income and your income per tax return. Now, income taxes is also considered a mixed account. So why is it considered a mixed account? It is considered a mixed account before because, again, we can recognize an asset and we can recognize a liability. Before we learned that in your IFRS 16 or PFRS 16, we can also recognize an asset and a liability. So it is just the same here with your income taxes. We can recognize asset and liability. But we call now the asset as a deferred tax asset. And the liability is known as your deferred tax liability. So those are the items that we need to learn in this particular topic. So how do we count for deferred tax asset and how do we count for your deferred tax liability? So the start, income tax. So for income tax or income tax under IAS 12, our main focus is the reconciliation of your accounting income and your taxable income because accounting income is prepared under PFRSS. So when we talk about PFRSS, that is composed of IFRS, IAS, and your IFRIC. But your taxable income is prepared based on our law. That is your NIRC as amended by your train law. Since now, these two items are prepared differently. One is prepared using a standard and one is prepared using, an, uh, using the law. Then there are differences as to the accounting or the income here and the income under your taxable income. So these differences are accounted under your income tax. We can classify the differences as a permanent difference or a temporary difference. So what is the difference or what do we mean when we say the difference is permanent difference and a temporary difference? We say that it is a permanent difference if ever that particular item that is considered a difference between your accounting income and taxable income does not reverse on future periods. But if that is a temporary difference, it reverses in future periods. So for example, you have e-revenue. So that revenue is accounted in your accounting income as 50,000. However, for taxable income, you will not get recognized that that is zero. However, soon on your future period, you will reverse that. So you can now recognize in taxable income. So both now equalizes at 50,000. So if that is a temporary, uh, you can still recognize it in the future period. Permanent, not anymore, not anymore. So one common example is the recognition of revenue. So in accounting, we can recognize the revenue so long as we have already performed our uh, services or we have already delivered the goods. However, for taxation purposes, we include it as an income if we have collected already the amount. So regardless if it is sold this year, as long as we have collected it this year, that is for taxation. For accounting, we use accrual. For taxable income, generally, we use your cash basis. However, there are instances that we can still use your accrual basis and cash basis, both for taxable and accounting income. You will learn that soon when you go to taxation, which is a separate subject again, in your accountancy 
or BS accountancy. So remember, in income tax, what we do here is we reconcile the difference. And what difference are reconciled or what differences are reconciled? Differences between accounting income and taxable income. These differences are either permanent difference or temporary difference. What is a permanent and temporary difference? So first, permanent difference. Permanent difference are items of revenue and expenses, which are included in either accounting income or taxable income, but will never be included in the other. Because again, we said this will never reverse. While in your temporary, it is included in either accounting income or taxable income, but to be taxed or deducted in the future. So we said a while back, temporary differences are reversals in the futures, either to be taxed or to be deducted. Another permanent difference pertain to non-deductible and non-taxable items, while temporary pertains to future deductible and future taxable items. We said this can be taxed in the future, deducted in the future. This one will never be included. Therefore, non-deductible, non-taxable. Permanent also does not give rise to either deferred tax asset or liability, but temporary gives rise to deferred tax asset or liability. Take note of these differences. Permanent never reverses. Temporary reverses. Permanent are non-deductible and non-taxable. Temporary are future deductible and future taxable. Permanent, no deferred tax asset, no deferred tax liability. Temporary, there is a deferred tax asset or deferred tax liability. We go now to your deferred taxes. So we said we can only recognize deferred taxes based on a temporary difference. And that is either a deferred tax asset or a deferred tax liability. So what is a deferred tax asset? A deferred tax asset is the amount of income tax recoverable in future period with respect to deductible temporary difference. Therefore, if we have temporary difference and that is considered a deductible temporary difference, in short, future deductible amount, then we have a deferred tax asset. Okay, we go back a while back. We said in your temporary difference, it, it, it gives to a future taxable amount or future deductible amount. Now we go to your deferred taxes. We have DTA or deferred tax asset. That happens if there is a deductible temporary difference. So in short, if that is a future deductible amount, kasi nga deductible, deductible, we have a deferred tax asset. Clear? If we have deductible temporary difference or a future deductible amount, we have a deferred tax asset. But if we have a taxable temporary difference, Taxable temporary difference or future taxable amount, then we have deferred tax liability. Okay? If it's deductible, deferred tax asset. If it's taxable, deferred tax liability. Sir, so why is it considered asset if it is a deductible temporary difference? It is considered a deferred tax asset because, as you all know, deduction decreases your tax liability. So how do we compute your tax liability, by the way? So this is your income, less your deductions, and then we have your taxable income. That's how we compute using your taxation. You multiply it now to your REITs or your tax table. If you have already seen a tax table, and this is your tax due. Okay, so if you have a deductible temporary difference, in short, you have a future deduction, this decreases your tax due. As you all know, taxes are considered liability of the organization to the government. Okay, 
So this is a liability. So if your deduction will increase in the future, then your total tax due will decrease. Therefore, you have an asset. Why? Because future liability will decrease. But here, in your taxable temporary difference, you have a future taxable in amount, meaning your tax due will increase because you have additional taxable amount. Since your tax due will increase, in short, your tax liability should increase. That's why we have a deferred tax liability for a taxable temporary difference. Okay. Permanent difference, no DTA, no DTL. Temporary difference, we have DTA or DTL. When do we have a DTA, deductible temporary difference, or a future deductible amount? When do we have a DTL, if we have a taxable temporary difference, or a future taxable amount? Take note of the differences of what it, on a permanent and temporary difference and the difference between a DTA and DTL or what gives rise to a DTA, what gives rise to a DTL. So let's take, into, let's take a look into your rules as to your temporary difference and when do we have a liability or when do we have an asset. So take note, permanent difference only have an impact during the current year, but temporary difference will have a future tax consequence because permanent difference is considered non-taxable or non-deductible. So let's look into the difference of your accounting versus tax income. So if the accounting income is greater than your tax income, then how do you reconcile it? So accounting income is greater than your taxable income. How do we reconcile it? So if we're looking into it, this one. Okay. So the accounting income is greater than taxable income. Let's say our accounting income is 50,000. Our taxable income is 40,000. How will you reconcile it so that you have 40,000? What will you do? You have 50,000 here. You have 40,000 here. What will you do here? You need to deduct. So in the current period, what did you do? You deduct. Current period, you deduct. So in the future period, what will you do? You will tax. If you will deduct here, to reverse it in the future, you need to add it. Ganun lang naman, di ba? Sabi natin, it will reverse in the future. So here, what we did is we deduct in the current year. So in the future, how will you reverse that deduction? You need to add it. So in adding it, you have a taxable amount. So if you deduct in the current year, in the future, you need to add it. You have a taxable amount. So in short, you have a future taxable amount. If you have a future taxable amount, what did you say? You have a deferred tax liability. You have a deferred tax liability. That's why here in the current, it is deducted. But in the future, it is considered taxable. You have a deferred tax liability. Okay? Okay. Uh, Please do not be, do not confuse yourself in case you have here assets here and we have here liabilities, okay? That's why uh, the books or tax basis differs on this SFP relationship because uh, on the first one, you have assets. On the second one, you have liabilities. But generally, what we look is the effect on the accounting income. So if the accounting income is greater than tax income, what do we do for the first year? We deduct in the future, it will be taxable. We have a future taxable amount. Future taxable amount, liability. Next, what if it is lesser? Okay. So the accounting income is now lesser. So let's say our accounting income is 45,000. Our tax taxable income is 53,000. So what can you do so that the 45,000 will become 53,000. You need to add, okay? You need to add. So in the current year, what did you do? You tax it because you add, okay? You tax it. So how will you reverse it in the future? You will decrease it, right? So if you add it now, in the future to reverse it, you should decrease it. So decrease represents deduction. Decrease represents deduction. So you have a future deductible amount. So in the current year, you tax it. In the future, you deduct it. Future deductible amount, asset. Future deductible amount, 
is an asset, deferred tax asset. So in short, we still went back to what we have learned a while back. So permanent, this is non-deductible or non-taxable. No deferred tax asset, no deferred tax liability. Temporary difference. As we said, this difference, we need to account for the difference of your accounting income versus your taxable income. Accounting income versus your taxable income. If your accounting income is greater than your taxable income, then we have a future taxable amount. If we have a future taxable amount, we have a deferred tax liability. If your accounting income is lesser than your taxable income, we said we have your future deductible amount. The future deductible amount is known as your deferred tax asset. Generally, what you need to learn here is when do we have a deferred tax asset? When do we have a deferred tax liability based on these relationships? You need to memorize these relationships. What is the effect if accounting is greater than your taxable income or the book value of your asset is greater than tax basis or the book value of your liability is greater than your tax basis? This is already summarized here in this particular diagram. Okay. Again, IAS 12, you need to look into and reconcile the difference between your accounting income and your taxable income. This difference can either be permanent difference or temporary difference. Permanent, no reversal in the future. Temporary, there is reversal in the future. No DTA, no DTL in permanent. There is DTA, DTL in temporary. You just need to know when do we have a DTL or a DTA for your temporary difference. What are the instances where in there is a DTA or DTL? We have here based on your accounting income, taxable income, and your SFP relationship of your books and your tax. That's it for our income taxes just need to recognize or when to recognize DTA and DTL. Okay, so how do we measure them? For the measurement current, you will use the tax rate, which is enacted. While for your deferred taxes, so after you get your DTA or DTL difference, you multiply them on your tax rate. So what is the tax rate? We're done with your recognition. So how do we measure it? We measure it using the tax rate that has been enacted by the end of the reporting period or expected to apply. So for example, we have your DTA, which is expected to reverse on 2021. Today is 2018, our rate is 30%. On 2021, our rate is 32%, for example. So if that is a deferred tax, it is said that your tax rate should be the expected to apply. The tax rate, is the amount that we expect to apply. So on 2021, what we expect to apply is 32%. So to compute, 32%. But for current, since we are still accounting for 2018, we use the 30%. Okay, again, current tax, use the current tax rate. Deferred tax, the amount of tax rate that is expected to apply at the time of your reversal. So in our example, it is expected to apply on 2021. The tax rate on 2021 is 32%. That's the end of our uh, topic as to IAS 12. Just remember when to recognize DTA, DTL, and how do we measure your DTA, DTL, or the current tax and the deferred 